So with that, let's talk about PACE, Property Assessed Clean Energy. This is really the, the key issue uh, of the day. There was a study done a while back by the Rockefeller Foundation that said that there's a trillion dollars to be saved uh, in buildings alone, in both public buildings and private buildings. A trillion dollars out there in inefficient buildings. And the state of Minnesota recognizes this as an issue and has a number of uh, programs and incentives and rebates and things of that nature to help the public sector and the private sector address this challenge. And PACE is one of those initiatives. It was created by the uh, legislature back in 2010. They said, hey, cities and counties, uh, you can use your assessment power not just for sidewalks and, and street assessments, but also to help um, building owners in your community. They didn't provide any money uh, back at that time to two cities or counties to do PACE. Um, and so when stimulus funds rolled around a few years later, the Department of Commerce, along with uh, the St. Paul Port Authority, created what is now called the MinPACE program. So PACE, essentially, the, uh, the elevator pitch on PACE is it's a great way for, um, for businesses, for multi-housing, uh, for nonprofits that own their own buildings to do energy efficiency improvements or utilize renewables and pay for it as an assessment on their property tax bill over a period of time. And typically the term is, is 10 years. These projects are growing in popularity because they're cash flow positive. Uh, there's always an energy audit component to the project. It's a requirement. So the energy auditor goes in and says, hey, if you change out your, your lights, uh, if you do some building envelope improvements, put in some insulation, you'll save, say, uh, $10,000 a year on your utility bill. The assessment is always going to be lower than what they'll save. So they'll save $10,000 a year and the assessment will be $8,000, for example. There are two public entities that administer PACE programs across the state. One is the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. Uh, this is 18 counties. These are 18 counties in the southern southwest part of the state. Uh, when wind started becoming a big issue uh, a few decades ago, they said, hey, instead of having separate rules and zoning and, and uh, uh, everything being different from county to county, let's get, get together and form the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. And they have their own property assessed clean energy program. It's just for those 18 counties in the southern southwest part of the state. And you can see on this map that the counties in green are where PACE is currently eligible, where businesses or entities in those counties uh, are, are ready to roll with PACE. The other public entity that has a PACE program is the St. Paul Port Authority. Uh, there's they call their PACE program the, the MinPACE program. So if I say St. Paul Port Authority or MinPACE, it's really one and the same. And the St. Paul Port Authority, with the help of CERTs, with the help of the clean energy resource teams, uh, they are signing joint powers agreements with counties all across the state. And so right now, we've, we've as you can see, we've pretty much got the southern part of the state uh, solid green, uh, ready to go with PACE projects, and we're slowly but surely working our way up north. Uh, the orange dots are where PACE projects have already happened. And so 
as you can see, we, we're, we're doing okay. Uh, we have about 83% of the state's population has access to PACE. The metro area is almost uh, all PACE eligible. You'll see Anoka County, um, we still need to get them on board. Um, so let's move forward. There's been over 120 projects completed to date, over $50 million worth of PACE projects, uh, totaling a, a $4 million in annual savings. Uh, lots and lots of BTUs saved. Uh, we're doing very well on that. And as a result, uh, lots of clean energy jobs being created as well. This is a solar project. The picture you're seeing is a solar project in, in Winona. It's uh, kind of a neat story. It's Winona Rental is the name of the business. And there was a solar company down in Winona that would always rent their equipment uh, from Winona Rental. And uh, the more they got to talking to each other, they said, hey, how about solar on top of Winona Rental? And they made it happen. Whether or not you're talking about the St. Paul Port Authority's program or the uh, Rural Minnesota Energy Board's PACE program, there's a, there's a few commonalities. Uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, the business has to be a good business, um, meaning they can't be in bankruptcy. They have to be up on all of their federal, state, and local taxes. The money's coming from the Rural Minnesota Energy Board, it's coming from the St. Paul Port Authority, uh, and uh, they do their due diligence uh, when it comes to where they send their money. This photo you're seeing is uh, from the New York Times. They did an article a few years back about how PACE is expanding across the nation, and they highlighted an auto mechanic shop in Edina. So let's talk just for a minute about the project process. Uh, first of all, you gotta have that, that uh, local government uh, established PACE in their jurisdiction, um, either through the Rural Minnesota Energy Board, they've got it locked down for those 18 counties, or by passing the Joint Powers Agreement uh, with the St. Paul Port Authority. Now you may be wondering if you're out there, I'm gonna back up here for a minute, if you are out there and, and you're from a community that is not green yet, um, you may be wondering, gosh, you know, how do I, how do I make this happen? Um, I'll tell you, it, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. When there is a project in a county and that does not have pace, that is a great way for, or a great time for me to approach the, the county, the county commissioners, the county administrators, and say, hey, there's a, a farm uh, right outside of town that w wishes to put in a 40 kW solar array, and they wish to pay for it using PACE. Let's get this rolling in your county. Uh, that's a great way to do it, to wait for a project. Um, but I would say uh, it's, it's also just fine to approach a county even when there's not a project um, in the works and, uh, and get PACE eligible uh, so that when a project does come around, they are, they are ready to go. So for the project process, first thing that the government does have to have a PACE established, uh, the business, can be, an, uh, can be a variety of different organizations, as I mentioned, but we'll say a business uh, has to fill out an application. It's, it's, oh gosh, maybe a five, six page application, pretty much name, rank, serial number, info, nothing too hot and heavy. Uh, they, they have to have that energy audit completed. Um, I mentioned that's, a, that's an important part of the, the PACE project, has to be completed. The business has to get lender consent. If they have a mortgage on their property, they need to go to that bank um, and, uh, and get them to sign off. 
PACE takes precedent over the mortgage. Um, and initially we thought, gal, that was going to be a, a big hang up um, that, uh, that the banks that are holding the mortgage uh, may not want to sign off on these PACE projects. Um, but we have found that not to be the case. If you're approaching a bank you, that has your mortgage and, and typically you've had a, a long-standing relationship with them, uh, they're, and you're, you're telling them that you're saving more uh, on an annual basis than what you'll be paying uh, for your assessment, and this is going to help your business, then um, they're more than willing to, to sign off on it. The business can hire whoever they wish to hire to get the project done. Uh, and so I'd point out that this is, this is not only good for that business that's going to be saving $10,000, as my example uh, noted earlier, on their utility bill. But then that business is going to be hiring someone uh, from uh, down the road to do that insulation, to do the lighting improvements, uh, to put on the, the solar array. And so, so there's a multiplier effect for these clean energy projects. I think we have a question. It's a great question. It's a little bit different. Uh, in, in the Rural Minnesota Energy Board, uh, those 18 counties, they do have a, a list of approved auditors. So, um, so, it, so yes, in a sense, a certified that way. Um, approved, maybe a, a different word for it. Uh, approved by the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. Um, in the St. Paul Port Authority's program, no, they they do not need to be certified. The Port Authority, I, I think I skipped a step here. Um, so you're a business, you have uh, your application completed, you've got that energy audit completed, you got lender consent, uh, you've got th three years worth of financials is what the Port Authority will be looking for. You got that submitted. The Port Authority has a credit committee that meets monthly. And so that business is going to hear back pretty quickly whether or not that loan is approved or not. And more often than not, they are approved. A frequently asked question I get is, well, gosh, are, are, uh, uh, is the Port Authority uh, ever going to run out of money? Um, and certainly that's something to pay close attention to. It's part of a revolving loan fund. And actually backing up a step, uh, when the stimulus funds came in, the legislature allocated through the Department of Commerce $15 million to the St. Paul Port Authority uh, to, to get this up and going. And all of that 15 million has been sent out two businesses across the state for clean energy projects. Every darn penny of it is out the door, but it's part of a revolving loan fund. So there's about $300,000 plus um, a month rolling back to the St. Paul Port Authority. So each quarter they have a, a million dollars or more to revolve back out to businesses through PACE projects. The, the um, photos you're seeing, also kind of a neat project up in Bemidji. It's a nonprofit that restores World War II aircraft. And they had an energy audit completed and it showed that the insulation in the hangar that they were working in, the insulation had compressed considerably over time. So they essentially had no insulation in this hangar in Bemidji uh, for the for the top a uh, uh, couple of feet of their of their hangar and you can imagine working with very small airplane parts um, in the dead of winter in Bemidji would be a bit of a challenge so they they did all sorts of insulation improvements and uh, upgraded to LED lights and I'm sure it's a much a much better much more comfortable place to work for these employees, a very successful project. Got a couple couple more questions here for you, Pete. You ready? Fire away. 
All right. So um, Sean Gashevsky asks, are there two levels of energy audits, like Energy Smart or Franklin Energy, in-depth versus lighter stuff? Um, and are there any obligations to follow up with auditing companies? Any obligations? Um, uh, no, there are no obligations to follow up with um, with auditing companies. And great question because that takes us to my auditing slide. How about that? Um, and what was the first part of the question, Dan? Oh, just if there are any requirements for the like level of intensity for the audit. There are no. There are no none. No. Uh, so we always encourage people who approach us about PACE and they're curious about how do they start. We always encourage them to contact their utility to learn about any sort of rebates that might be available. And as, as you may be aware, many, of, many but not all of the utilities provide an, an auditing service. Um, and again, I want to stress uh, there's no um, level three audit or level two audit that's that's a requirement as part of the, the Port Authorities program. And again, as part of the RMEB program, that the auditor needs to be uh, part of um, an approved auditor. So we always encourage folks to contact the utility uh, and learn, learn about their services. And then there are programs out there where folks can receive free energy audits. One is Energy Smart, and that's a program through the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce uh, where businesses receive a free energy audit in Excel territory. And also, if you're a nonprofit out there that, that owns your building, you can get a free energy audit through a program called EnerChange. And again, that is also just in I believe just in Excel territory. For farmers, uh, there's a, a program through the U.S. Department of Agriculture called EQIP, where where farms can uh, receive free energy audits, and uh, and RETAP, Retired <coughs> uh, Engineer Technical Assistance Program, or Retired Environmental Technical Assistance Program. Amazing program. Uh, retired, uh, primarily engineers going out across the state and doing free energy audits, both for, for businesses, for nonprofits, and for local governments. Uh, and uh, I also want to mention, um, this is important to note, that CERTs through our Clean Energy uh, Job Board, we have a list of auditors uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, he's in, he's in charge of uh, the Clean Energy Job Board. There's a list of energy auditors that, that's listed on, the, on that it's, job board, or not job board, the pro Clean Energy Project Manager, I'm sorry, Clean Energy Project Manager. We got a lot of websites as part of <laughs> so it's hard to keep them track, but Clean Energy Project Manager. Yeah, so we, uh, we recently added auditors to our Clean Energy Project Builder directory. Um, and that's at cleanenergyprojectbuilder.org. You can get to it from the CERT site. Um, it'll list a lot of the folks who do audits, uh, not just in the Twin Cities, but across the state. And um, Pete, I actually have a follow-up question about audits for you. Um, at what point in the loan process is the energy audit required? So do they have to do that before they apply for the loan, or how does that work? Great question. Uh, yes, they should do that before they um, submit an application for the loan. It actually is attached right to the application. So here's a few bullet points. If, if you're a business, why would you bother with PACE? First of all, they lower your utility bill, as you can imagine, or as you know, uh, the utility bill is a hefty chunk for businesses to swallow on a monthly basis. Another important benefit with PACE is say you're a business and uh, it's May 17th 
and today is the day you put in your new LED lights and your insulation and new motors and pumps on your equipment. Uh, you have received a, a PACE loan to purchase all these items. So you start seeing the savings the day you flip the switch on these on this new equipment, on this on these new lights, you start seeing the savings on your your utility bill. You don't have to make a payment until May of the following year. So you wouldn't have to make a pay a pace payment until the next time you pay your, your property taxes the following year. And in the meantime, you're seeing utility bill savings uh, for the next 12 months in this case, uh, which is a huge, huge benefit. And of course, uh, the, the, the reason why businesses um, do these sorts of, of improvements is, is varied. Sometimes it's to, to, uh, uh, to lower their utility bill. Other times, like I mentioned with the Bemidji example, um, it's about building comfort. Right? If you don't have insulation in your walls and you're in Bemidji in January, it could be a little bit a little bit uncomfortable and to uh, address any sort of deferred maintenance and to upgrade your machines, right? I mean, you can, you can upgrade your machines uh, at your business and um, be more productive that way. For the government side of things, it's fairly straightforward as well. You are, you are helping to create clean energy jobs. Um, you're assisting your businesses be successful, your nonprofits being successful, your multifamily housing entities be successful, and you're helping to promote sustainability. Sometimes counties or cities, they have sustainability goals and PACE is a great fit for that. Here's a few frequently asked questions when I'm out and about and talking to county commissioners. Uh, they uh, they may ask, well, gosh, what's the what's the time commitment that the county has to go through, or the city has to go through um, if we implement PACE? And the answer there is pretty minimal. Uh, the the counties in particular are very used to doing assessments. It's what they do. Uh, they they place assessments on streets, on sidewalks, on all sorts of things, and so. Um, the county board always looks over to the county assessor um, when I'm making a presentation and the assessor usually says, no, nope, not a problem, we're good to go. Uh, the St. Paul Port Authority provides all of the information uh, needed uh, to place that assessment on the property. And golly, what if the business goes out of business? A couple years down the line, is, is the local government ever on the hook to make a payment? to pay back the assessment? No. The legislature made it very clear uh, that only the assessment itself from that business can pay back the assessment. The local government's never on the hook. And then when I'm out and traveling in, say, far uh, northeast Minnesota and, and I talk about the St. Paul Port Authority, they always give me a bit of a strange look um, saying, wow, why is the St. Paul Port Authority wanting to play in our sandbox here. And the answer there is because the legislature was, uh, and the Department of Commerce were aware that the Port Authority has been in green financing, been doing green financing for a long time, and has expertise in this area. And so uh, the, the uh, Port Authority worked with the Department of Commerce to, to build out this program statewide. I've got a few case studies that may be helpful. This is the Blue Line Travel Center down in Worthington, uh, a great business right uh, off of I-90. And uh, as you can see from the picture, they have a ton of exterior lights. They got a gas canopy and actually a couple of gas canopies and um, tons of exterior lights. So they put in $74,000 worth of LED lights. They use the, the Rural Minnesota Energy Board's PACE program to pay for this. Of course, they took advantage of the Worthington Public Utilities. As, as you recall, I said a few minutes ago, we always encourage folks to 
connect with their utility early on in the process so they can learn about those rebates. And they took advantage of the U.S. Department of Agriculture REAP grant. This is something you definitely need to be aware of. Rural Energy for America program, or REAP. It is up to 25% grant, not a loan, straight out grant to businesses in rural America, and that's a good chunk of Minnesota, um, are eligible for, for these grants. And the Blue Line Travel Center took advantage of it. Um, the audit actually uh, said that they're going to be saving, I think it was two grand um, uh, a month. And, and uh, actually, the annual savings, were, well, as it says right here, is projected to be $14,000. Um, the uh, owners are actually realizing considerably a bit more than that, about two grand each month of savings, so um, twice, twice uh, that amount. And so they were so pleased with the PACE program the first time around that they went out and got a second PACE loan for interior lighting. Also in the southern part of the state, this time the south, southeast part of the state, Morristown, and I believe that's Rice County, uh, put in a, four, a 30 kW solar array on their trucking business. They used the Minnesota MinPACE program, also utility rebates. Uh, solar, keep in mind, uh, so I mentioned that uh, if you do a PACE program, uh, you see the benefits today, and then you don't make your first payment until May of the following year. And that's good for all sorts of projects, but particularly solar because you start seeing the savings today. Then when you pay your federal taxes the next January, February, March, you get the 30% federal tax credit and you start taking advantage of accelerated depreciation. So you see those, those tax benefits coming at you right away as well. And so Tim's Trucking took advantage of the USDA REAP grant as well. This one's uh, down, um, I believe, near the Iowa border, Parkwood Place, a multi-housing, um, Old County Hospital that was converted to multi-housing several years back. And uh, they did a whole host of energy efficiency improvements inch and a half thick insulation in their mechanical room, energy efficient water heater, uh, lighting I believe was uh, part of that, that project. Annual savings close to 10 grand, assessment uh, just shy of nine grand. Uh, so a uh, uh, $90,000 project and you can see they, they again took advantage of the PACE program, the local rebates and the REAP grant. A restaurant in the Twin Cities. This one's in Edina, Salou, a very nice place. A smaller pace project. This one's definitely on the smaller side of things, $39,000. Uh, and uh, they did lighting, uh, some, some kitchen improvements, some controls. I like the quote of, of what the business owner had to say here. The savings should pay back the investment. It's a no-brainer. This one's in Stearns County. It's a campground, the Cozy Corner Campground in Richmond. Uh, FEMA required this campground to put in a, an emergency shelter. And so the owner said, well, I gotta put in a shelter anyways, and I'm facing some pretty heavy duty utility costs, particularly in the summer. And so he put up a, a 40 kW solar array and I believe he went out and got a second uh, PACE loan for uh, a second um, solar array. Very pleased with the project. You can see uh, he took advantage of PACE, the rebates, um, from some funds that were available at the time uh, for solar, and the 30% federal tax credit. Even a skyscraper is great for PACE. I realize there's not 
a ton of these all across the state, but uh, this one was last summer, the first National Bank building in downtown St. Paul, that iconic number one, $6.75 million pace project. So, um, you know, here's something I, I failed to mention at the beginning. Uh, another frequently asked question is, is there a maximum that can be loaned out to businesses? And the answer is kind of yes and no. Um, uh, the, the maximum that can be loaned out is 20% of the assessed value of the property. What the county says is the assessed value of the property, 20% of that assessed value is the maximum amount that can be loaned out to that business. So that's an important point I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, there's a there's a minimum as well for both the RMEB and and the St. Paul Port Authority, but it's very small. It's like I don't I'm not even quite positive what it is, but it's like four thousand dollars or something like that. Um, uh, let's see. So yeah, this uh, skyscraper, first National Bank building in St. Paul, uh, six point seven five million dollar project. You can see. They put in 3,000 LEDs, holy smokes, uh, variable frequency drives on their pumps and motors. Uh, they have these old 1950s and 1960s chillers, uh, or chiller, and I, I believe this is right. They got the, the nation's largest crane to come in in the dead of night, roll it into downtown St. Paul, and, and uh, lift out this antique chiller and put in some brand spanking new, very energy efficient chiller or chillers. Uh, it, the, it was the largest rebate that Excel has ever given out before or since, uh, about a million dollars in rebates, $300,000 in tax credits. Very cool, uh, very cool project. And I will tell you, I went to the, the lighting ceremony that they had uh, last summer, and it was quite exciting. This is for the the, the iconic First National Bank building, uh, and uh, there was a countdown: ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and it remained dark, and everybody started getting a little nervous, and then boom, boom, it popped on, and there was a giant sigh of relief and cheers. Yes, exactly. Uh, and cheers. Uh, so a few more uh, case studies. This is a farm. Uh, using PACE uh, on farms is, is wonderful, great, uh, definitely a niche. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of PACE, PACE projects, PACE solar projects uh, on farms. And this is a dual tracking system. So the, the solar array tracks the sun up and down and left to right. And you can see this farmer um, received PACE funds and the REAP grant as well. And you can see over the lifetime, projected lifetime of the solar array, this farm is going to benefit to the tune of a, a quarter of a million dollars. A nonprofit that does, uh, uh, that does um, medical research in, um, I believe this is in Minneapolis. And... Uh, you can see what the executive director of this entity says, very pleased with the project. We, we already have 25% energy savings showing up on our electric bill. We make it easy for counties to get the word out. Uh, CERTS provides a draft press release and a PSA. Uh, we, we provide text for, the, for their newsletters and websites and all sorts of good information. Uh, we have, of course, regional coordinators, as folks on our steering committee know, and they're more than willing to give presentations uh, at Kiwanis clubs or chambers of commerce, um, where, wherever folks are gathered. We will be there to talk about PACE. And so here's just an example of what one county is doing to help get the word out. Washington County has a very nice website dedicated to PACE. So I'm happy to answer any questions. We may be over our time by, by just a little bit, but 
if there's any questions, maybe we'll uh, take people off mute and 